Good morning and welcome back to my channel. Today we are starting a long slow project. I'm a little bit nervous but I think it's going to be okay as long as I take my time. I'm going to be making a leather jacket and I'm going to be making it out of real leather. I've been sitting on this leather for a little while and it's finally time to make the jacket that I have been thinking about for like six seven eight months or since the pattern came out um the pattern that i'm going to be using is a vicky sews madison pattern it's an oversized like biker style jacket to make sure that i don't ruin the leather by making any silly mistakes i will be making um a calico version just to make sure the sizing is right so with that i'm not going to bother with zips or pockets or anything like that it's just the main big pieces just to see how it sits over the shoulders and then we'll be making a second version out of the faux leather that I picked up a couple of months ago because I did intend to make that the actual jacket but then I saw this leather and I thought actually I think this will be better and then the final version is out of the real leather so I fully expect this project to take weeks maybe even months depending on how slow I am putting things together I really don't want to make a mistake I want this jacket to last me for decades so yeah I'm going to take you along with me it will all be worth it so yeah okay let's start I will show you the fabrics that we're going to be making everything up with and then we're going to start Okay, so this is what the table is looking like at the moment. I got the Vicky Sews pattern, um, Madison uh, jacket, printed on A0 paper. I did not want to spend the hours putting all of this together with A4 and sticky tape. Nope, not doing it. So this time I sent it to a printer. I get my stuff printed out at netprinter.co.uk. They do first class, like, next day delivery if you... Um, send your stuff like early in the day so I was able to get this in like two days perfect um I also backed all of the patterns with some card because the paper is actually kind of thin and I didn't want to rip this and I know that I'm going to use this pattern probably more than once over the next however many years because this seems to be the classic oversized leather jacket that can also be made in denim and other fabrics so um, I wanted to make sure that it lasts so every single piece is in card apart from the lining which I will cut out later. I also have uh, this fabric here. Uh, if you remember months ago, I got this faux leather fabric. This is what I was originally going to make this pattern out of, um, but I have since changed my mind and we are using leather. But this is what I'm going to do my practice version on. I will make the first part out of calico um, and then the second part when I do the whole thing will be out of this. I've separated them into two different spots these are all the facings the pockets linings stuff like that this is just the shell of the fabric all the main pieces to give me the outside shape and sleeves with like a collar this is what I'm going to make out of calico first just to make sure it fits right with all the seam allowances see if I need to make any adjustments then when we make it out of this fabric here we'll use all the pieces and do everything including the lining and then if that one works and I'm happy with it we move on to this, which is the leather fabric. Now I've had this about eight, nine months. I've only just opened it today, still in its plastic. I was gonna get a black leather, but I'm a big fan of green, khaki green, um, any kind of green to be honest. But I did want something that was fairly close to black. So still a neutral color that I can wear with most things, but it was a green. So uh, yeah, I, th I feel like this is a little bit different from your just standard black leather jacket, but still gives you the same kind of tone if you're looking for that kind of color. Um, I got this from a place called GL Leather. They do tons of leather. They do it in London. Um, whenever I'm in London and I'm looking for that kind of fabric, I get it from them. Really good prices. They have a bar basement where you can get really cheap leather but this was from their upstairs stuff it's got like a slight sheen to it slightly textured I just think it's so pretty and because this is an oversized pattern I had to get quite large sizes so I think these were working out to like 30 or 40 pounds per skin these fabrics are not cheap this is not 
fast fashion. This is a this is like a slow sewing project, which is why I'm doing all the mock-ups and the twirls, and I'm making uh, hopefully informed decisions about how I sew this up. But like, I can't stop touching it. It's really, really soft, and I'm really, really excited um, to to sew this. But this is not going to get touched for a little while. Not until we've made at least two versions. I also need to decide on hardware. I've got some like, uh, this is an olive green zip. This is a black zip. Do I want brass hardware? Do I want silver, gunmetal grey? Like what do I want to get? So that's something I still need to decide on and I will be, you know, putting it against the fabric to see what it looks like. But yeah, that's everything on the table. And today we're just going to focus on getting the shell together so that we can do the first fit. All right, so I've cut out all the body pieces. Here they are in calico. Now I'm going to put these together um, just the outside seam so that we have like the boxy jacket and we can see how it fits on the shoulder and uh, where it is on the hip and all of that. Okay, so it is the next day and I have just made the first mock-up of just like the base pieces so I can see how it fits for size. But this is kind of basically the size of what it's going to look like as an outer layer. So if I was to just close it up, so the zip would go across like this and there'd be a zip here. If I was to zip this all the way up, this is what it would look like. Uh, not as oversized as I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be like really big and quite swamp swamping me. But this is actually like the perfect size for me. So if I was to, let's say I had it half zipped, it would look like that. I like it. I like it a lot. If I was to have it open, hands in the pockets. Yeah, it's just the right size for me. So I don't think I'm going to change anything at all. Yeah, I'm quite happy with the size of the sleeves. I purposely wore a jumper. It's not very thick, but I just want it. I'm wearing two layers just to see if I feel like it's too bulky and I don't, which tells me I can also wear like a big bulky jumper and still feel fine because I've still got plenty of space in here. So um, we're all good. Okay, so I guess it's now on to step two where I make it out of this fabric. Although like the impatient person in me wants to go straight to the leather, but I don't have all the tools yet. I have a few things that I need to pick up, like some leather glue to glue down my seams and stuff. Uh, so I have to wait. So we, we do actually have to make this version. And I also want to make sure I get the pockets right. Um, so this would be a good practice. So yeah, over the next couple of days, I'm going to cut this and we're going to sew it together. But I'm not going to do that today because I now have to go to the dentist. So I'll see you guys later. been a couple of days and the last thing that you're probably seeing was me trying on the calico version just for fit. Fit is great, perfect, great. I then, about two days ago, cut out the faux leather version and then spent a further two hours cutting out all the interfacing. And then yesterday when I went to start sewing it, I just didn't want to sew it. I'm not gonna lie, I really want to get straight to the leather. I don't want to sew this jacket twice. I know that it's going to fit. We've already done a fitting and looking at the instructions and everything, it doesn't seem like something that's out of my expertise. So I feel like I'm going to hold on to the faux leather project for another time. It's not 
not going to get done. It's just not going to get done right now because I just want to get straight to the leather. I went over to Instagram to tell everyone there and hopefully have people talk me out of it. And instead everyone was like, you've got this. I think one person was like, no, 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 make the mock-up version. Everybody else was like, you got it. It's going to be fine. So I'm boosted by the confidence of the people on Instagram and we're just going to get straight to the leather. It might be famous last words, but I'm gonna do it because I am eager to wear this jacket. So uh, yeah, that's the update for you. Today, I went into Manchester to get some lining and some other little supplies. And I wanted to show you what I got before we get it all chopped up. This is going to be the lining for inside the leather jacket. It's a poly cotton, so it's quite smooth. It's printed and it's got this foiled mushroom look on it still quite dark because the jacket is going to be dark but this is I think it's going to look really really cute inside cute uh, maybe not cute I don't know if cute is the word but it's going to look pretty good I like mushrooms these are like black and green and like this like bronze metallic I really like it um so this is going to be for the body and then we've just got like a normal black um polyester lining for the sleeve so that it's there's no um resistance when I put things on so like silky on the sleeves and party in the back I also picked up some non-woven interfacing so that I can interface everything um there's quite a lot and the pieces are quite big and everything needs interfacing so I'm going to do that and then the last thing that I picked up was some thread now this is in a like khaki green it doesn't actually match the fabric it's going to be a little bit of a contrast on top I did find a color that matched it completely um, but I need it to be a thicker thread than your normal standard like um, polyester thread I'm gonna do a little bit of testing with this see how I feel about it we might have to wait for this so um, that's everything so what I'm gonna get on with now is I'm gonna start marking out all of the pattern pieces on the underside of the leather making sure that it's in all the best parts of the leather and kind of just marking where there might be any faults in the leather so I don't uh, use that as a pattern piece. So we're gonna get that done hopefully this evening and then tomorrow we will start the cutting and the interfacing process and then that's it, we're in it. We're in it to win it. And then we'll do some testing with the scraps. Okay. Right, so I was in London yesterday and I managed to pick up all the rest of everything I need for this project. So we found two different colours. They look very, very similar. So as you can see, we've got two different colours here. Both kind of work. I still need to decide which one I want to use. Um, I've got the grommets that I need. I've got... I wasn't sure what size, so I went with two different sizes, but we're going for brass. My zips came in the mail, so I tried to make sure basically all of the hardware is the same. And these are the buckles for the um, belts at the bottom. So I've got everything that I need here. I've cut out all my pieces here. They've been interfaced and my lining is there so I guess we are ready to go I'm gonna grab some scraps we're gonna do a few bits of testing and then we're just gonna get into it I'm so excited okay so we have started working on 
the front piece and as you can see here I have cut open the pocket opening and then glued it so that it's down. I use some books and stuff to keep it nice and flat and now we're ready to put our zippered pocket in. So I've already put the zip on the top and the bottom and the way this works this will kind of basically do that in a much much neater way and then once this has been placed inside then you sew around the edges in a top stitch to secure this in place then um, on the inside we can close the pockets up so that is what we're doing now table is a lovely mess uh, but we're getting there slowly Right, after much cursing at my sewing machine and just not being able to get this to fully line up like I like, we finally got it in. In the end, after gluing, I had to recut this one again uh, in the last bit of leather that I had because it was just terrible. But you can see the stitching, it is not straight, but even seeing it on camera, it doesn't actually look that bad from afar but like I am annoyed guys I am annoyed because it took me so long just to line it up correctly only for two needles to snap and it just be a nightmare and I it was a nightmare because of the glue where it was glued closed it was like really really hard so this one was okay this one I had to recut and use tape to tape it closed and then just sew through the tape because it was just a lot easier to do that so I will not be using the glue again but uh we're moving on to the next step because shoddy stitching or not from this angle and from like me wearing it unless you're looking close up it doesn't look that bad but yeah I'm an I'm I'm annoyed but we move on. There's not much I can do about it. I am thinking of possibly doing a decorative thing. So like when you do bound buttonholes, you would stitch into the line and then go around the inside and just bind the edges. So maybe that's a decorative thing I can do around there and it'll look more uniform if it's all just kind of like bound around the edges. But right now we're just going to move on and just get this jacket done. The next thing we're going to do is add the front pieces like this on this side and then on the other side with the zip on it so that's what we're going to do next wish me luck okay so this is the progress of the jacket the front half is done. Um, the pockets are like slightly janky, like this bit here, but I honestly, overall, think it looks pretty good. As you can see here, it un, I'm sorry, it unzips. We've got the facing in. These pins, these clips are holding um, the flappy bits together. But as a jacket, it looks, it looks like a jacket. So now we're gonna go and do the back and then hopefully we get to join front and back together. Okay, so we have the front and the back done. Uh, it's actually zipped up in a moment, but I'm about to do the side seams and the shoulder seams. That's the back. This is coming together very nicely, feeling very confident about this. So uh, now we're gonna sew these together and then I can try it on like a gilet. Okay, a little progress check. We have made the body. Um, we haven't put the lining in yet and we haven't done the sleeves, but we've done the body and the facing and it looks pretty good. Quite happy with the progress, as you can see. It zips up, so let me zip it up for you. So that's what it looks like zipped up. I'm wearing a hoodie so I know that I can wear bulky things underneath it. Um, the fitting that we did was perfect because I'm really happy with how it is. Um, 
and yeah so I can have it like this I can have it open and yeah it looks pretty good I'm not I'm very happy and I was a bit worried about like how the stitching would look around the pocket because I kind of messed it up a bit but honestly from here you can't see anything so I'm honestly I'm more than happy I, I'm, I think it turned out really really well so that's uh, what it's looking like so now we're gonna go and go on to the next steps which I think is doing the collar and then the sleeves and then the lining and all that stuff so let's go about to do the epaulets on the shoulder this is for the belt buckle front belt buckle back I believe we have to do these first and put the little like rivets and stuff on the shoulder before we go on to the collar and the sleeves so I'm just following what the instructions say and again the room is getting messier by the minute turns out all of the interfacing that I used for this it just wasn't working I didn't need it so I took out all the interfacing pieces so got a lot of uh wasted interfacing there which i'm kind of annoyed about but it was the cheap stuff so i'm not too annoyed about it and uh got my standard two drinks does anybody else do this when i'm working i like to have a cold drink and a hot drink so i have like a tea which i sip and then i have this which i glug i need something to sip and something to glug yeah so uh and usually they're snacks but i have no snacks today so all right, let's carry on. Good morning, everyone. So it's been a couple of days. I did say this was going to be a slow sew. Um, and yes, it is taking much longer than I would normally take to put something together. Normally, I'd try and get it done in like a whole weekend. But I've been, I've been busy. It's weird. Like, I'm never this busy. All of a sudden, I want to do like a big project. I'm busy all the time. But... I've managed to get all my little bits and pieces done. Um, we've got belt loops. We've got actual belts, which I'm about to put all the little uh, grommets on. We've got uh, belt ends. And then we've got epaulets, 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 epaulets for the shoulder. So now I have to put all the snaps and stuff on. And I can put that on the jacket. And then we work on the collar. And the sleeves now I don't think any of this is going to be that difficult I've got my hand pressure machine so it should be fine I think probably the most difficult part of this now will be doing the collar and making sure it all lines up so we'll see how that goes Everything has had its hole punched and now we can put it all on the jacket. This is, whoa, I just fell over. This is what it's looking like right now. The collar is on, although I need to get, there's like two stitches in there that I need to kind of like stitch in. My gosh, it took so long to get the collar in because the instructions are for faux leather. So you can like stitch them together on the inside but this was really really thick to try and get these two collar pieces together here so i had to hand stitch and glue to get it together mm -hmm. but we've got there the uh shoulder epaulettes are on and it's looking pretty good we've got uh these on which again i had to stitch these ones on by hand and these ones I was able to do in the machine. It's got a silver pen on it, which is what you can use to like draw on um, leather and it wipes off really well. So when this is all done, I'll give it a good wipe down so you can't see any of my markings. But I'm very happy with how it's turned out so far. <sighs> okay, so we are finally getting onto the lining. This lining bit needs to be done before the sleeves are done. But I did do a preemptive sew together of the two pieces of the sleeves and then I have to put the lining in this before we attach it to the jacket but uh I'm really loving this lining I think it's going to be so nice um we've got some pleats in the middle and on the shoulders and I just need to join these together at the shoulders and at the side seams and then we can start putting it in this babies hello 
You okay, baby? The muffin's getting pretty big now. She is... She's a year old. She's like 14 months old now. You big girl. You come in. <laughs> you, caught, you missed my hand. <laughs> okay, yeah, she likes to come and hang out on the table. She's going to get comfy on my pattern pieces. And I am going to finally put the lining in. So we're getting very close. Bye. Uh, getting close. Let's do it while we still have sunshine. Looking pretty snazzy. Lining's in. This is the opening. And now sleeves. The sleeves are finally on. Put the little snaps on. Oh, it took us so long to get here and now I just need to join the lining of the arms and the lining of the jacket together and then the final thing is to put the belt buckle on and then we've got to do a top stitch all around the front and the neck and then I'll show you what it looks like. So that is the final jacket. I absolutely loved how it turned out, even though it took so much time and energy and I broke like five needles. We got there in the end, so super, super happy about that. And look, here is my cat, Pancake. And if you look in the back, there is also another one escaping. That's Muffin. So that's it. That's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, then hit that thumbs up button. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have you made this jacket before? And if you haven't already, then subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Happy New Year.